Well, there was a problem. During the first flight, the Pegasus rocket booster and the HyperX flew out of control. For safety reasons, the vehicles were intentionally destroyed by our controller. This was pretty hard to do. Years of research seemed wasted in an instant. Fortunately, failure is always anticipated, and we had two other vehicles built and ready for launch. The next test was even more challenging because the second vehicle had to complete the work of the first vehicle in addition to its own. Procedures are in place for studying failures at NASA. The investigation found problems in the models we used to predict the aerodynamic characteristics of the rocket fan. The Pegasus rocket booster was chosen for these flights because it had a proven success record. But we also knew it had too much energy. A decision was made to drop the rocket from the B-52 at 7.3 kilometers to bleed off the energy so that we'd be at our desired Mach 7 condition when the rocket motor burned out. Analysis of the data from our failed flight indicated that the air at 7.3 kilometers was too dense for the rocket's fins to work at this altitude. For the second flight, which was also at Mach 7, we had some choices to make. We could drop at a higher altitude. We could change the amount of propellant. We could change the rocket design. We could redesign the test vehicle. Or we could scrap everything and start all over again. As we worked the problem using our best aeronautics tools, we realized our team had been focusing on the research vehicle. Another challenge was that the scramjet engine had been successfully tested in wind tunnels using the system with an airframe that had not yet been tested in actual flight conditions. In order to fly the HyperX, we had to balance the thrust produced by the engine and the drag of the airframe. We revisited our design process and approached the problem differently. This time, we began to treat the whole assembly as one vehicle, rocket booster, HyperX airframe, and engine. Teamwork is critical for this kind of work and the next two flights verified the success of scramjet technology. I know that our teamwork contributed to our success. Imagine the teamwork that led to the technology that sent people to the moon. It took a three-stage rocket the size of a 15-story building that could carry oxidizers and the necessary fuel to get our astronauts to the moon. Scramjet engines might someday be used to replace the second stage of the launch. For the first stage, we would need to reach a speed of Mach 4 using conventional turbojets or rockets. During the second stage, the scramjet would kick in. Finally, the third stage would send the vehicle into orbit where the air pressure is too low for the scramjet to work. Without having to carry all that extra oxygen, a more efficient and safer space access vehicle can be designed and operated. And we can send astronauts into orbit more often. Although human flight on a scramjet is many years away, the data we collect today will help future researchers who follow in our footsteps.